What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is part two of how to create your own training program. In part one we covered split, what exercises you're going to do, and your volume aka your sets and reps. In this video we're going to go over progressive overload, intensity or how hard you should be going and how much weight you should be lifting, and periodization of all the other steps we went through. So if you enjoy the video and you find it helpful, please leave a like, comment something down below, and subscribe for weekly videos. All right, guys, let's hop right into it. So the first thing we're gonna go over is progressive overload. And if you've never done a program with progressive overload before, this is gonna change the game for your workouts and the results that you see. So progressive overload, the first thing that everybody goes through is bettering your form and getting the actual skill of working out. After that, then it comes to adding weight to your main compound movements each week. And there's three ways we're gonna go over to do this. There's gonna be one way for beginners, one way for intermediate to advanced lifters, and one way to go about progressively overloading your accessory and isolation lifts like bicep curls or cable kickbacks and workouts and exercises like those. Jumping into the first way to progressively overload for beginners is called linear progression. And so we have weeks, weight, and reps here, right? So how are you gonna do this is just going to be adding five pounds to the bar during your compound lifts each week while keeping the reps the exact same. So week one, you'd be doing 135 pounds for five reps. The next week, you'd add five pounds to the bar and do 140 pounds, same reps. Next week, add five more pounds, same reps. The week after that, add five more pounds, same reps. And that's all it is. For beginners, this is the best method to use because you'll be able to make results the fastest as a beginner. And then you can move on to our next progression model, which is linear periodization we'll hop into now. All right, let's talk about linear periodization now. So instead of making progress week by week, like in linear progression, you're gonna be making progress month by month or block by block. So I have it set up in four week blocks here, two blocks, and you're gonna be still increasing the weight by five each week, but you're also going to be decreasing reps by one each week as well. So week one, you're gonna be doing 135 pounds for eight reps. In the next week, you'd add five pounds and decrease by one reps. Next week, same thing, 145 for six reps, 150 for five, five reps the fourth week. And then this is where you make the uh, improvement month to month. You, the next block, you start five pounds higher than when you started in block one. So that'd be 140 pounds and you'd go back up to the top of the rep range and this is where you make the progress. So 140 for eight and you do the same thing, 145 for seven, 150 for six, 155 for five. And then the block after that, you'd be doing, you'd start five pounds heavier than this, so 145 and you go back up to the eight. So instead of making progress week by week, you're making progress block by block or month by month if you have it set up in four week blocks. So our final progression model is the double progression model. And all that means is you're not increasing the weight until you reach the top of the rep range. So usually when you're using this, you'll have a rep range to use. In this example, we're gonna be using an eight to 12 rep range. And this is for all your accessory and isolation movements. So like bicep curls, tricep extensions, lateral raises, glute kickbacks, uh, leg extensions, leg curls, all those types of single or double joint movements. So let's go through an example of what this looked like. So we're gonna be, you always wanna start at the bottom of the rep range. So week one, let's say we're doing 50 pounds for eight reps. Since we didn't hit the top of the rep range, what we're gonna be looking to do is improve on reps before we hit, we increase the weight. So week two, 50 pounds, we increase our reps by 10, 210, that's great. Week three, 50 pounds, we increase again to 12. Now that we hit the top of the rep range, that next week we're gonna increase the weight and start back down at the bottom of the rep range. So that's all it is, is increasing the reps you can do to the top of the rep range and then you increase the weight. All right guys, by now you know what split you're doing, what days you're working out, what muscle groups you're working on those days. You know what exercises you're doing. You know what volume you're doing, what amount of sets and reps you're doing. You know how to progress your training program over time. Now let's go over how hard you should be going and how much weight you should be lifting in those workouts. Because if you're consistently training to failure, you're gonna end up hitting a wall and it's actually gonna make your progress worse. And if you're not training close enough to failure, 
you're not even gonna be able to see results at all. So let's go over through that now by using the RPE system and I'll explain what that is and how you can use that to your advantage. All that stands for is rate of perceived exertion and it's an intensity scale from one to 10, gauging on how close you are to failure at the end of each set. 10 would be complete muscle failure at the end of the set. Zero to five would be not very challenging at all, very lightweight. For the best results and to maximize your time inside of the gym, you're gonna wanna try to hit a six to nine RP. And all that means is that you're stopping each set one to four reps before failure. And I know at first this can be confusing, right? RP, it was for me at least, but at first, if you're a beginner, just focus on form, focus on progression and getting better at the skill of working out. And then over time, you'll become more comfortable with this once you're working out with that in your mind and you're testing it out. If you wanna test it out, just try to do like an isolation or accessory movement. So let's say you're doing bicep curls with a goal of five reps. You wanna do five reps and you want a goal RP of eight. So go to five reps, right? Do bicep curls to five reps with a weight that you think you'll hit an RP of eight. AKA you're stopping two reps short of failure. And then once you get to eight, keep going. See how many more you can do before you you can't do any more. If that's two, then you hit that RP right on the head. If it's, if you could do five more, then you're gotta work on being more accurate with that RP. But at first, just focus on getting your form down and getting better at the skill of working out before you worry about RP. All right guys, hopping into our last part, periodization. So this is the most subjective part about creating your own training program. And it covers stuff like how long your program is going to be, when you're gonna change out the exercises in your program, when you're gonna periodize and change the volume and intensity of your workouts, and how to prevent plateaus in progressive overload. And I say this is the most subjective part of creating your own program because there's no science-backed definitive answer like answers like the other parts. So what I can do instead of giving you a definitive answer is tell you what I have done that has worked for myself as well as for my clients. So let's hop into number one right now. How long your program should be and when you should change out the exercises in your program to keep things fun and fresh while still getting the results that you're after. So program length, what I do is I create 12 week blocks and inside of that 12 week block, there's three mini blocks that are each four weeks long. And each of those mini blocks is a new workout program with the accessory and isolation movements changed up to keep things fun. But the main compound movements are mostly the same variations of the bench, squat, deadlift, overhead press, stuff like that. Those are mostly the same. So we can keep getting the results through progressively overloading the compound movements, but keeping things fun and fresh by changing up the isolation and accessory work that we do in those workouts. You shouldn't, if you're programming for yourself, you shouldn't change your exercises less than monthly, I'd say, because the main thing that drives results is going to be progressively overloading those exercises. So it's smart to keep those exercises around long enough to progress at them. How to change and periodize your volume and intensity of your program. So this part's already done for you guys. Just go back to the progress progressive overload part of this video. And if you're a beginner, choose the linear progression model. If you're intermediate to advanced, choose the linear periodization approach, which has you increasing weight, AKA intensity, as you're decreasing reps, AKA volume, week by week. So go back and choose whichever one of those applies to you and it's already done for you. Let's hop into how to prevent plateaus. So the best way to prevent plateaus is to periodize deloads inside your plan. So you don't have to plan for deloads unless you want to, but I typically just do it, play it by ear, see how your feedback is, how feeling during your workouts, how you're recovering from your workouts. If you're increasing weight week by week, if you're hitting a plateau or something, it might be smart to take a deload, which is, and what is a deload? All it is is dropping your volume by 30 to 50% during a week period, I'd say a week workout period. And it's smart to at least take a deload every 12 weeks, absolutely. If you haven't, if you've been on a progressive plan and you haven't taken a deload week in the last 12 weeks, it's definitely smart to take one because if you keep going and going and going, you're gonna build up all this fatigue in your body and eventually you're gonna hit a wall and it could actually stall progress for longer if you don't take deloads in your plan. All right guys, I know this is a ton of info these last two videos that I put out but I hope it has given you some insight on how to create a result-based training program. If you put together a program and want me to look it over for you, I'd be more than happy to do it. My email is down below. Just send me an email and I'll look it over for you. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for weekly videos. And also part three is not 
All you need is part one and part two, but part three is going to be a free training, four day training program that I'm gonna put out for you guys next week. And it's also gonna have a template. So if you guys just wanna delete what I put and put whatever you wanna put, you can go ahead and do that as well. And I'll see you guys next week.